Okay, so the next thing in sports is uh, the Atlanta Braves. Um, but outside of the sports aspect of it, we want to talk about uh, the fact that Georgia was supposed to host, oh, Atlanta specifically was supposed to host the uh, Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Um, that got pulled, unfortunately, because of uh, a segment that we had in our last episode, which is regarding the um, uh, Georgia, oh, I f forget what the number was, SB202, I think it was. Voter suppression law. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one where they um, say that you can't give water and food in line and all those other things. Yeah. Well, um, the backlash is swift. Uh, MLB was like, okay, we're pulling our game out of here. Um, word, word on the street is that the uh, MLB Players Association had a lot of people within there being like, we're not going to play this game in there um, because of this law. Yeah. Like, it was uh, apparently a lot of black players were like, this is, this is Jim Crow 2.0. We don't want to play in there. Yada, yada. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a stance. And MLB surprisingly pulled their game. And I say surprisingly because you, you think of NBA as like, you know, a black league, if you will. You know, you, you, you might, I don't know about soccer so much in America, but you know, NBA, NFL, you could probably see that. MLB, I did not expect that. You know, MLB. They're the NASCAR. The, the, some people claim NASCAR is sports. So you said they're the. They're the, they're the NASCAR of sports, even though some people try to claim that NASCAR is sports. Oh, but okay, yeah. You know, so you, you you got muted for a second. That's my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're um, they're they're more they're more suburban, but yeah, older for sure. suburban. For sure. Yeah. Look, I, I love baseball. I go to base games a lot. I'm definitely a minority there. More so a minority than I would be. <laughs> I would say I am, but since my wife is Dominican, not really, because, you know, mm. baseball is pretty, pretty, has a lot of, at least, at least we have, a, she has a lot of representation on the field. Exactly. You know? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> There's a lot of Dominican players. I don't know about Dominican fans in the seats. Well, yeah. It depends on who, because, uh, like, say the family might be like, oh, we're going to go to this one. I was like, why? I was like, There's this guy that actually is from our, um, he's from our town. Um, I was like, oh, yeah, I knew him? I was like, no, but he no. is from our town, so we're going to go see him. Yeah. But, um, I get what you're, you know what, I'm going to say, because I, I see what you're at, what you're saying is, like, it's kind of shocking, but I actually would, I would say it's not. Mm. MLB is trying to, they're kind of trying to survive. They're still yeah. a multi-billion dollar um, industry, but remember, they're competing against the NBA, mm. which isn't as at making anything as much as the NFL. You know, they're competing with all these other big sports some might argue mls mls can have a good chance of becoming you know some might say no but it's it on the way have, up you know because the thing is that one thing that mls has you'll see when you go to audiences i mean to to games youth yeah yeah there's a lot all of uh, like when i went to mls uh to, to the to the Atlanta united games I'm not gonna lie. One, I was, I was, I was amazed. I was like, "Yo, I'm not the only brown face. There's a lot of brown faces here, right?" Mm -hmm. And then two, I was surprised at how many people our age was there. Because you know, you, you go to the NFL, you're used to seeing uh, a good amount of people, but a lot of them are a little bit older than us, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so anyways, I'm sorry. I thought you were about to say something else. No, but, no, no. Uh, but yeah, so I feel like that's kind of what they're doing. It's like, yo, these kind of this the idea of not playing in protest protesting this because of the voter suppression that is something that's youthful in a sense right like that younger people are into the, so i'm not saying that they're, they're they're doing it to bring in a younger audience but they're definitely probably doing it to not alienate a younger audience yeah that's that's a very good point and uh, uh, to go to the mls thing for a second um there is a lot more youth in there than like nfl for instance because the entry point is also lower as far as like money wise it's yeah. it's cheaper to be in the stands in the mls game than an nfl game and like if, if you even go to the tailgates pregame it feels younger it feels like college game day so yeah. tailgate which is but isn't that I never expected. About because it's mlb is the same thing in regards to price you can go to some games that's true oh, mlb is bucks. cheaper but the thing is and 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 we've been seeing it uh well i don't know if you have as much because you don't i know you don't follow mlb like that but there has been a push over the last, I want to say like five years or so, to kind of make MLB cooler amongst urban communities. 
-hmm. like you know make it because they've seen that black people don't watch mlb as much i can't remember if it was an espn i was watching or fox sports they were talking about that like you know branching mlb out to like you know more like black communities yeah and i felt like this is one of those issues where you're right they didn't want to drop the ball and alienate people in that as it's just not something i would have expected just because of what i see when i go to braves games like just a sea of look the last time i went to a braves game i saw a guy wearing a um uh, uh one of the but what are the uh, is there a particular name for the buttoned up jerseys in baseball uh, i don't know i don't know well anyways you know what i'm talking about right? yeah, the buttoned yeah. Up ones like an old school back in the, the way they used to wear them in the 20s where they buttoned them up yes and it was a trump 45 in the back so yeah, yeah. That, that's what, audience, that's more of what i expect to see yeah that's basically. more of the people that you expect to go but i think also i'm gonna be is looking at this as like if the majority of my players are saying this, mm -hmm. that's what the majority of my audience is gonna, the, at least the majority of that I want, because MLB is having an issue targeting that, that demographic, the, 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 what was it? The 20, what is it? What's the, what's the biggest desirable demographic? Is it like 25 to uh, 18 to 29 or, or something like that? Yeah. 29 to something like that. Yeah. They're having they have issues because I go there and I do see some young people, but the majority of them are old old school cats. You know, um, they they bring their kids, but it's usually it's usually like people in their like I'm gonna say forties, a little bit older than me, who have kids that are around like ten. Yeah, yeah. As, oh, that's about as, that's usually a good amount, but then obviously it keeps getting older and older as you go uh, yeah. uh, as you look around. So. Um, I'm, I, I was surprised too, but I'm not shocked to be after thinking about it. Yeah, and speaking of like players, uh, I don't know if you remember. It was like our first or second episode of ZZ Talk. We talked about um, the a Mets player getting booed for kneeling. Um, yeah, yeah. This is Dominic Smith. At the time, we couldn't remember. We did a correction. <laughs> the next episode, Dominic Smith. He he kneeled. He got booed by his fans and all that stuff, and he was like, he was like teary eyed in his press conference talking about it. Um, but even though in the audience it's not very like um, diverse, uh, yeah, the the players' association is pretty diverse, and there mm -hmm. are black people who play um, MLB, even though there aren't black people watching as much. So uh, this is this sea change. Hopefully, it's a it's a positive sign for things to come. And I hope MLB gets rewarded as far as like people, you know, seeing them as a positive force yeah. for good. Now, obviously, I would have liked to go to the All Star game. I think that would have been a good thing. But weighing me wanting to do that over the importance of you know speaking out against this bill, I think this just yeah. I think this means a little more right so and, and and in that same vein um will smith and anton fuqua yeah uh have decided to remove their sh what was the name of their movie i don't uh, remember but it was a slavery movie again. yeah it's a slavery M movie more black and... strife <laughs> yeah so so you know it's just like we're not gonna get political today because uh today is a very fun episode but yeah. it was just important to talk about because it was sports related but Probably maybe follow up on it to see uh, if there's more that comes after that. But it's kind of yeah. like Emancipation, by the way, is the name of the movie. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's just like people want to say you can't mix sports and politics. But the thing is, and I think you said it, these the people who are playing these are people. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry, but I'm not. If I'm a, if I'm a successful, you know, obviously as we know, I'm a bowling star. But, you know, if I were an actual star of any other uh, type of sport, you're not going to try to tell me to, oh, suck it up. Yeah. I'm still going to play my game. Yeah. Look, all those football players kneeling, that didn't stop them from playing the football game. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, like no, it's you saying sports and politics shouldn't mix is like saying sports and human, humanity shouldn't mix. It's yeah. like, no, they're not, they're not, they're not monkeys that are just going to dance because you tell them to dance. It's, you're it's, more than your occupation, right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, just because you know, in your daytime you are a landscaper or you you I don't know what what are other jobs <laughs> you you you're a grocery store worker or whatever doesn't mean you're not allowed to have opinion on things opinions yeah. on, on things right so 
why can't these guys have opinions as well? So, yeah, uh, but yes, we will keep it out of politics. Um, we just want to talk about it because it's happening. Here. Yes, but we're going to stick with Braves. Um, yes. They've been playing, and I have heard through the grapevine that they haven't been playing great. You talk more about that, sir. Okay, so um, we're now 13 games into the season. Uh, the Braves started with the series against the, is it the Nationals. Uh, yeah, I, uh, no, the Phillies. They started the series against the Phillies, and they got skunked. Um, they lost their first four games. Uh, and then I believe they played the Nationals next. Uh, don't don't hold me on that. They, I know they played the Phillies twice already, and then the Nationals, and then they played Marlins this latest time. So they they went 0 and 4, and then they went to start it off. To start it off, yeah. And then they won the next four, so they went back to 500. So they're 4 and 4, and then they lost the next four, uh, and then they won today. So they're, now they're five and eight. So they're one. They're one out of four. So they're yes. This is hopefully one they out win the three more. Yes. This. Yeah. They're gonna. They go into Chicago and they're gonna play in the Windy City. Oh, okay. um, they're gonna play the Cubs. Um, yeah. The oh, the the office is struggling really badly in the later innings, which is very different from the Braves of like the last five years. The Braves used to be that seven, eighth, ninth inning team. Now the, the bats have gone cold. All but one. Um, oh, Ronald, and who is? Ronald Acuna is having an MVP caliber season through the first two weeks. He already has seven home runs in the first 13 games, um, which means, to put that into context, he's on pace for like 85 home runs. Obviously, he's not going to get 85 home runs. That's just ridiculous. Or but, is he? Uh, or, or is he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's on pace. He's He's gang buses right now. I think he's um, hidden over 450 on the season. Uh, these are just like... Yeah, it's numbers. funny because I saw somebody print something on... Uh, did you see it on Facebook where they talked about like the the, the lineup? Mm. And I don't know baseball, but they showed like what is it, the point six something? That's, that would be your average, right? Like yeah, so his batting average is like point six something and then the oh, one that oh. was like point three. And that, all of them kept falling. that must have been earlier in the season because point six something is like getting two hits out of every three at bats. Okay, like, so it, it, the numbers there was a significant there was a there was at least a difference in like the first point whatever. Yeah, was about a, a two or three different like of a number, and everybody else was like close together. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know baseball, but I can tell this yeah, Robert is all by himself. He's pulling away. He's doing it. He's really amazing right now. The game that they won today, um, he uh, he hit a home run today. Um, today was another example of the struggles we've been having holding on to our leads late in the game. Uh, it happened yesterday, where I think we went in, we either went in with the lead or we went in tied, and then we gave up a ninth inning run, and then we couldn't do anything with it, and we ended up losing. Uh, against the Phillies on Sunday, where they said the guy touched the plate when he really didn't. Um, it was also a ninth inning run we gave up and we couldn't. So. That's one of those things that makes me just like, this is why I can't watch baseball. I'm like, how is that not reviewable? It is reviewable. They reviewed it and they still got it wrong. Oh, wow. They reviewed it for like five minutes. And I was watching, and my niece doesn't like, like baseball, or whatever, but we were all watching it. And she was like, oh yeah, he didn't touch the plate. And my nephew was like, no, he didn't touch the plate. And I thought, no, I think he did. And then I saw the like three different views, all of which he didn't touch the plate. I was like, oh, I don't think he touched the plate. And then they're like, oh, yeah, he touched the plate. Safe. I'm like, what? So, so that we lost on that run. Um, uh, I always get the feeling that, do you think the baseball refs in MLB, I wouldn't say that they're, um, that they're incompetent, but. I would. I'm kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say, is like, I was like, do you think that they're too, um, too full of themselves? I think so. I get yes. that feeling that they're too full of themselves. Yes, yes, yes. You know, that that's a very good point you make because I've seen it before where it's almost as if it's like, oh, if you talk back to me, I'll punish you with a bad call. You know, I, I think um, Darno was the catcher during that play. And I think Darno like, got in the rest face, like, like, what are you talking about? This dude clearly missing, yada, yada. And almost like a power trip sort of thing. He was like, you know what? No, he's safe. Even though we just saw it on the, on the video review, I'm going to call him safe. 
That's what it, it felt like to me. And I remember someone saying the next day, it's 2 p.m. and uh, Alec Baum still isn't safe. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, yeah, so we've been losing, you know, one run games here and there. Um, we really got to tighten up the bullpen. Sounds very Atlanta-like. Yeah, yeah. The, the bullpen really needs to tighten up because this is not sustainable long term. Offense, you know, offense is going to get hot, you know, other than Acuna. We need the other hitters to get hot too. Uh, Freeman is, you know, he's doing Honestly, okay. Acuna's like, I'm already hot. Yeah, but the Acuna hit a home run yesterday and he like did this, right? And someone posted that and said, uh, Acuna showing the rest of the dugout how many people are carrying the team. And it's like, <laughs> he's like pointing a finger at number one. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I am still to use stock market terminology, bullish on the Braves. Oh. I, I think they'll do well. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm not worried. I think when we get to the 50 game mark, if we're still below 500, then I'll be worried. But yeah. uh, One more question. Explain the new overtime of extra innings um, rule mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And yeah. tell us if you like it. Yeah. Um, so this was a rule that was implemented because of COVID last year, and then they just kept it around because they because they liked it. Um, the way the rule works is that once you get into extra innings, uh, so 10th inning and onwards, they put a man on second uh, in scoring position to start the inning. Um, the person that's in scoring position is the last batter to hit. So if um, in the the top of the ninth or whatever your team is hitting and the third out is Acuna um, in the top of the 10th Acuna will be on second base um, to start the inning right the idea is that you want to increase the chances of teams scoring a run um, so some teams might bunt Acuna over to third base so that the next guy can get a sack fly and run him in or, or hit him in or whatever it might be right uh, so that's just a way to speed up the game um, now the question is, do I like it? Uh, I actually do. Yeah. Cause I've, I've watched, uh, extra time, um, extra inning games that can like go really long. I've, I've watched an 18 inning game before. <laughs> wasn't, uh, the, the Cleveland, Cleveland versus Chicago. Wasn't that, didn't that go like into one? It got rain delayed. The to, World like... Series game seven. Oh, no, game six, the one where Chicago clinched. No, I think it was seven. Like, oh, seven oh, oh, yeah, it might have been seven, very, yeah. Final of everything. Yeah, it, was, it went into extra innings. Um, and at the time, uh, Chicago... So, so I actually missed the extra innings of that final game. Uh, Chicago at five o'clock in the morning, bro. <laughs> you had to go to work the next day. Chica Chicago was leading. And no, I actually had to drive to Orlando the next day, uh, like oh. overnight. And so I was like... I wanted to see the end of it, right? Because the Cubs had never won before. They had this big curse. And uh, I wanted to see the end of it. But then they were leading. They were going into the ninth. I was like, okay, they, they're going to win it. And then Cleveland comes back and ties it to go into extra innings. And then extra innings just kept dragging out. So I was like, look, we, we got to go. <laughs> and then, you know, I saw the notification ESPN when it finally finished. Are they including this overtime? Oh, I keep saying overtime because I know extra, it's not extra inning. Extra yeah. inning rule into, do you know if they're doing it for the playoffs and World Series? They did not do it in the playoffs last year, um, even though they did it in the regular season last year. Uh, I hope they don't do it in the playoffs. I, I yeah. think, I feel like that's a different That one should go classic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, another new rule that they've done is that for double headers, um, which is when you don't have a, when you have a game rained out, for instance, because you can't play game, you can't play baseball in the rain because of the mud. Um, when you <laughs> have a game rained out and rescheduled for like the next day, you have a double header, right? So you have two games playing that day. Well, now the new double header rule, which was implemented last year and it's carried over to this year, is that double header games go from nine innings to seven innings. So, so that's another that's, thing that they. Oh, that's. I, uh, do you feel like they're doing that for the players? The fans or both? Oh, well, um, part of it was injury concerns, no wanting people. Well, no, no, sir. Part of it was COVID concerns. You're yeah. trying to reduce the amount of time people are around each other. But I think now it's more of just like a pace of play situation. Yeah. I mean, two nine inning games in a single day. 
is a long time. And they used to do that for hundreds of years. So no, I said hundreds <laughs> of years. But the, you know what I mean, for, for dozens yeah. of years. Um, but now I actually like that they've made it a permanent rule where it's it's gone from nine to seven. One thing that was a rule last year that they've taken away is the universal DH, the designated hitter. Um, so the difference between the American League and the National League is that American League used to have a DH, and all they do is hit. They don't they don't field. You know, they, they don't play first base or outfield or all that stuff. They just hit. Um, in the National League, you don't have a DH. The pitcher actually hits in the lineup usually number nine in the lineup. But last year, for pace of play reasons and COVID, they made both leagues DH leagues. So pitchers didn't hit last year. But now um, they've brought it back to where in the National League, pitchers are hitting again. Oh, wow. I did not know that each league had its own rule. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had That's crazy. Rule. I can't I can't think of how that would work just because I'm thinking well, of like when you NFL where... Yeah, when you do interleague play, whoever is hosting, it's their role they go by. So if the Braves are hosting, then like if the Braves are hosting the Red Sox, then the Red Sox pitcher has to hit. But if the Red Sox were hosting the Braves, then we would have a DH for that game. Oh, that's crazy to me. Like, yeah. that, that they have different rules. 